against war and violence to the time when we will to talk about the war poets as it reports are for war or something. And if we go to the history of poetry and war or poets and war, many of our epics dealt with war. For instance, about Ramayana and Mahabharata, war is one of the basic themes in those epics. Even Homer's Iliad talks about the pros and war, which is the core of the epic of uh, the Greek epic. And if we come to more modern times, poets have taken part in wars. For instance, uh, Byron joined the Greek insurgents in 1823 when Greek was fighting against the Turks. And uh, mm -hmm. Byron, as a matter of fact, died during that uh, time in Greece itself. So there is the instance of Baudelaire joining the French Revolution in Paris in 1848. And in uh, the history of literature, there is at least one poem which caused a war, as it is said. It was uh, Britain's war with Russia in 1878. It was not much of a poem, it was a music hall song. And uh, the lines were, we don't want to fight, but by jingo, if we do, we have got the ships, we have got the men, we have got the money too. And the historians have now analyzed that Britain had no business to go to war during that year or that period. It's the this musical song, which was sung all over Britain at that time in pubs and streets and all, which forced Britain to go into war with Russia. This is a very strange example ever of poetry causing a war. The next uh, instance I am going to quote is the Boer Wars in 1818, where poets or writers are supposed to write pieces to collect money. And uh, Kipling wrote a propaganda poem which is supposed to have raised a quarter million pounds. So that is how the poet uh, served the war. Of course, we come to the term war poet in the First World War, and the famous na names of uh, Wilfred Wayne. Siegfried Sassoon, Robert Grace, Rupert Brooke, and uh, Randall Jarrett. These are the poets who fought in the war as soldiers. And many of them were also instrumental in uh, getting youngsters to go to war to fight the uh, Britain. But they also came back disillusioned with the war. And we're talking about uh, poetry against war. And uh, Siegfried Sassoon, when he came uh, during a, uh, a follow from war, he wrote a whole declaration against war, in which he said, I am making this statement as an act of willful defense of military authority, because I believe that the war is being prolonged by those who have the power to end it. I am a soldier convinced that I am acting on behalf of soldiers. I believe that this war, in which I entered as a war of defense and liberation, has now become a war of aggression and conquest. One could say the same thing about many other wars being fought today. Well, uh, Owen co collected his war poems. In the introduction he wrote, he wrote because he was writing about war and uh, writing poetry about war. He says, I am not concerned with poetry. My subject is war and the pity of war. The poetry is in the pity. That's how he said. The next time we see poets gathered in a, in a arena of war was during the Spanish Civil War, 1936 to 39, which is called the Poets' War by Stephen Spender. The many writers who fought on the, part, on the side of the Republicans like uh, Hemingway and Orwell, Auden, Neruda, Lorca died during the war, and Stephen Spender himself. Spender said about this war, and it's very significant in the context of today's poetry reading. Poets and poetry have played a considerable part in the Spanish Civil War <coughs> because to many people the struggle of the Republicans has seemed a struggle for the conditions without which the writing and reading of poetry are almost impossible in modern society. So this is, uh, we come to the period of the Second World War, 
fortunately or unfortunately, there are no war poets as there used to be in the First World War. And people asked, where are the war poets? Robert Graves, the veteran of World War I, had an answer to give. He said, poems about the horrors of the trenches were originally written to stir the ignorant and complacent people at home. But it's extremely unlikely that the poet of the World War II would feel any qualms about the justice of the British laws. The only poet who was known to have written poetry for war effort in the Second World War was Edna St. Vincent Millet, who wrote that poem, My Canal Burns at Podians. So she wrote war poems for five years during the Second World War. She was so obsessed with the war that she wrote only war poems. But they were worthless, and after the war, she called in this poem, Fires, Prostitution of Poetry to Propaganda. So that says a lot about uh, writing poetry about war. I think I'll stop here because uh, since then many wars have been fought, but uh, the powers don't call them wars. Instead, they call them uh, Vietnam War, the US called an international armed conflict, and the other wars they called uh, humanitarian intervention. Mm -hmm. So with these words, I think I'll uh, leave it to the poets to